السلام عليكم Welcome to lecture 30. In this lecture, we're going to talk about a very interesting type of reactors. It's called micro reactors, or which is part of what's known as micro process engineering. Micro reactors are emerging as a new technology in CRE, chemical reaction engineering, known as micro process engineering how does a micro reactor look like hmm looks nice right so can you see that the whole reactor is very very small it's a, it's a micro reactor it's not a usual reactor that we are used to and if you see uh, we have the channel depth and the width are around 150 micrometer times 150 micrometer so if you look if you have a cross-sectional cut through this reactor so you'll see that the channel is something like this and the flow goes inside and so the depth of the channel is only 150 micrometer and the and the height sorry the depth is and the width as well as this is the width here okay is also 150 micrometer that's why it's called micro reactor it's called micro reactor okay uh, micro reactors are characterized by their high surface area to volume ratios in their microstructured regions that contain tubes or channels so the the whole reactor is consists of either tube so circular or a channel like a rectangular channel okay so and this reactor is characterized with its high surface area to volume ratio high surface area to volume ratio and of course you know how is that possible because if you divide the surface area so let's take the surface area here surface area we divide it by the volume and let's assume it's a it's a tube so the channel consists of a very fine tube a very long tube as well okay so what is the surface area the surface area let me show you the surface area is course this parameter multiply by the length of the tube right so it's the surface through which through which heat gets transferred correct so as can be written as 2 pi r which is the parameter mahir parameter times the length right times the length okay what about the volume the volume of this tube of this reactor basically is the cross-sectional area this area times the the length so that would give you the whole volume so this is pi r square times l let's cancel out things together so the l goes with the l r goes with the square and then you have here pi goes with pi and you are simply left with 2 divided by r 2 divided by r see this is the 2 left here and this is the r so the smaller so we're talking here the surface area per volume so the smaller the radius it becomes the larger the surface to volume is or in other words for a given volume for a given volume the smaller the r is of course when the r is a small the cross-sectional area is small you need to make the tube very long right and therefore you'll get extra surface area when you do this so for a given volume when you reduce the radius the you get more surface area 
طيب a typical channel width might be 100 micrometer with a length of 20,000 micrometer so see the difference between see the huge ratio between the length and the diameter it's huge right but at the end of the day the 20,000 micrometer is only two centimeters so the whole reactor is very small it's a micro reactor the resulting high surface area to volume ratio reduces or even eliminates heat and mass transfer resistances often found in larger reactor so now you have huge amount of surface right so that's excellent that means you will not have you not have a problem with transferring heat so your resistance heat transfer is almost nothing the same thing with the mass transfer because the radius is not very large it's very small so you don't have problem with the uniformity of the concentration along the radius right so the concentration in the middle is almost the same as the concentration next to the wall or anywhere else across the radius consequently surface catalyzed reactions can be greatly facilitate, facilitated hot spots is high in highly extreme uh, in highly exothermic reactions can be eliminated and in many cases highly exothermic reactions can be carried out isothermally so let's go through this again to understand it so we said because we have high high surface area to volume ratio then the surface catalyzed reactions can be greatly facilitated what does that mean well you have huge surface area right so you can deposit you can deposit the catalyst on the surface on the wall of the tube right so now you have a huge amount of surface that you can utilize for the catalyst and hot spots in highly exothermic reactions can be eliminated what is hot spot well basically you get hot spot as we explained in chapter one when you have for example if this is your temperature axis this is your the length let's call it z oops it doesn't show up uh, z okay so at the beginning of the reactor the temperature is small and all of a sudden at the beginning whoosh, the temperature will shoot out and then it will go down again because you can transfer the heat so this is something which happens in normal plug flow reactors called hot spot in this case in this case this will not happen because you have huge surface area huge surface area this usually happens if you have large radius so you have large quantity of reactants here so you have a huge amount of moles converted so that you have large amount of heat released from the exothermic reaction but you don't have enough surface to transfer the heat however in this case where you have very small surface area tamam you have very small surface sorry when you have very small radius tamam so you have just few amount of reactants here that means even if they react all the released amount of heat will be less okay tamam so you can facilitate it uh, transferring this heat and okay we still have long reactor right tamam so this will continue happening and you continue removing this heat through the surface which you have a lot you have very large surface area per unit volume and that's the last point and in many cases highly exothermic reactions can be carried out isothermally because you're constantly removing any heat released from the reaction so the temperature could stay constant. let's take an example of a micro reactor and this actually example coming to you from MIT I'm sure you're all familiar with MIT Massachusetts Institute of Technology one of the best engineering universities in the world okay so what did they do they have a microprocessor as you can see where basically 
they are depending on uh, this chemical reaction so you can see that there is a chemical reaction taking place and basically all of this happens on a micro reactor and you can see here you have an inlet at the beginning and then there is a mixture and there is an ex extractor where the reaction happening place and then you have a small separator here and then you have a, a outlet there this is another example of micro reactors so all of these are micro reactors it's like a lego you know you can just have a certain setup so you want a reactor you put a reactor a micro reactor there you want uh, a micro pump you can add it there you want a valve you can add a valve you can add a mixer you can add a separator see this is a schematic diagram of one of these blocks that that is a micro reactor with heat exchanger so you can see that the reaction mixture entering from here from this side and obviously you have here micro channels which are characterized with high surface area to volume and in addition to that the other layer so they have an alter uh, you have alternating layers the other layer you have some for example coolant passing through so you have huge surface area and in addition to that you're also using coolant which is taking away heat from the reaction for it, if it was a highly exothermic reaction still you can operate it isothermally as we mentioned in the previous slides okay so let's go to an example example for seven this is a gas phase reaction in a micro reactor so the following examples to be solved using design equations written in terms of molar flow rate okay you can do this exercise in two hours and also you can solve it uh, using design equation written in, written in terms of conversion okay of course this example where we have a micro reactor you see micro reactor there are channels okay so you have this tube consists of lots of channels so this is a micro reactor and you have few of them okay so basically you can solve this example by two different method because it's simply a gas phase reaction and it's a single reaction run under a steady state so no harm of using design equation written in terms of conversion all what you have to remember is to divide this equation by two so that you have one in front of the limiting reactant or the reference reactant okay but anyway let's do it first using design equation written ter in terms of molar flow rate so you can use dfi by dv equals ri and of course you know that you have to write three of these design equations anyway so let's read uh, well you can read you can read more about this problem and solve it at home uh, um, you have the answer here so basically whether you solve it using mole balances written in terms of molar flow rate or you solve it using mole balance written in terms of conversion you should get the same profile you should get the same molar flow rate profile which is fa fc fb versus volume tamam so please do this at home So with this, we reach to the end of our discussion about micro reactors. And this is the end of segment one. And we'll meet again in segment two of lecture 30, where we're going to talk about another type of reactors. Have a great day.